I want you to imagine you're a high school student tapping away at your calculator, studying for chemistry or physics or maths, whatever it might be, and suddenly the batteries die. So you run and find a fresh set of batteries and get them replaced, but now you have four cold dead metal sticks in your hand. What do you do with the dead batteries? Now, in my family, we sort of just put the batteries in a bottom drawer somewhere and hope that the batteries disappear one day. But this obviously isn't the best way to handle the battery waste problem. In this presentation, I want to talk to you all about the sugar bio battery, which could potentially change the way we think about energy and electricity in Aotearoa forever. In their last report looking at battery waste disposal, the New Zealand Product Stewardship Council estimated that only 0.2% of batteries are recycled in New Zealand. This means that just under 2,800 tonnes of batteries are deposited in landfills where they are mixed with concrete and disposed of in drums where they lie for years to come. Household dry cell batteries, like the ones in your battery powered calculator or electronics like your phone, contain toxic heavy metals such as nickel, cadmium or mercury. When disposed of, these heavy metals dissolve into leachate as the battery casing corrodes. These metals are extremely dangerous to the natural environment, endangering our flora and fauna when they leach into waterways or enter ecosystems, potentially poisoning the kata we drink and the kai we eat. Crucially, and perhaps most importantly, this interrupts the spiritual balance of our taiao by introducing toxic man-made chemicals into the naturally harmonious ecosystem of the environment. And the statistics aren't looking good. This graph shows the annual amount of e-waste produced globally, and batteries in these devices constitute a meaningful portion of the danger and toxicity of this waste. Note that around the world, e-waste is increasing by about 2 million metric tons each year. In fact, just last year, New Zealand generated 80 million kilograms of e-waste. That's more than an average of 16 kilograms of e-waste per person. The increasing trend is present in New Zealand as well, as more and more students have access to cheaper computers like Chromebooks, and more than ever are we reliant on our mobile devices. While it's great that more of us have access to electronics, it does make this e-waste problem a lot harder to deal with. So, what's the solution? This is the solution. Well, not exactly. You see, this is maltodextrin, also known as 2R3S4R5R23456-pentahydroxyhexanal by fictionate chemistry fans. Maltodextrin is a polysaccharide, a long carbohydrate chain, and is currently used as a food additive in soft drinks, candy, as well as in foods like pasta and cookies. It's produced from cornstarch using enzymatic hydrolysis. That stuff is all boring. What's most exciting about maltodextrin is that a Virginia Tech research team found a way to convert all the energy in this molecule from energy that usually makes little children hyperactive and annoying to energy that could literally power our phones. How does it all work? It's called an enzymatic fuel cell. Enzymatic fuel cells, or EFCs, are emerging electrobiochemical devices that directly convert chemical energy from a variety of fuels like maltodextrin or glucose into electricity using low-cost biocatalyst enzymes. Simply put, they convert the chemical energy of the maltodextrin into electrical energy that we can use to power our devices. Think of it like this. When you eat food, Enzymes in your body break down the chemical energy stored in the food and convert it into energy your body can use. Enzymatic fuel cells essentially replicate this process, but instead of converting the chemical energy into energy that allows you to walk around or if you like me during lockdown to sleep, it converts the energy into electrical energy. And the fuel cell can use most types of sugar or polysaccharides, and, but maltodextrin is used as it is one of the best fuels. Maltodextrin has an 11% higher energy density than glucose. It can actually be produced from cellulose, 
That's the stuff in literally every plant ever. So it's safe to say that it's quite abundant and also cost effective to produce. Let's talk about some of the pros of this technology. The bio battery has the potential to be up to 85 times more efficient than the standard lithium ion battery in terms of energy release. It also has the potential to be significantly cheaper to manufacture and use, releasing more energy per dollar, that's scientific jargon for more bang for your buck. In fact, the standard AA battery can power an LED light bulb for about 30 minutes, whereas the maltodextrin derived from a single cob of corn could power that same light bulb for 40 hours. Furthermore, the bio battery is sustainable, as all of the materials in the battery are biodegradable, as they are naturally occurring biological compounds. Moreover, the battery is rechargeable by simply adding more maltodextrin. Finally, the bio battery is really safe. The battery is neither explosive nor flammable like the current technology and is only one major byproduct when generating electricity, water. This means that it's totally carbon neutral during the production of electricity. Safe to say that this technology is really safe to use. So, what is this all, why does this all matter? Let's first take a look at Taiyao or our natural environment. In order to make a standard battery, you need to mine and extract heavy metals. Then you need to put these metals into a battery casing to deliver to the consumer. Then this battery may be disposed of incorrectly, which causes massive environmental damage. Leakage of toxic heavy metals into the soil is no joke, because even small traces of the metal in natural water systems or in the soil could wipe out native flora or fauna. Replacing these batteries with bio batteries would substantially reduce this effect, which has a very important benefit for our tire as energy continues to grow as a sector and e waste becomes an increasingly pertinent issue. This leads us to benefits for our agricultural sector, for our ahu whenua. Because maltodextrin is primarily derived from corn, use of the EFC technology massively benefits our agricultural industry. Farmers are able to diversify revenue streams away from only producing for consumption, which may see significant fluctuations in price due to the volatile nature of commodity prices, allowing farmers to tap into the growing sector of energy, with the crops growing on your farm are used to generate electricity and energy, greatly benefits the agricultural industry. Furthermore, removing toxic heavy metals from our natural environment um, and natural waterways benefits the agricultural industry as well, as having a successful farm relies on having a clean environment to begin with. Lastly, I just want to touch on Hawara well-being. Our well-being as humans is naturally interconnected with the environment that we live in, so by removing heavy metals and overtly man-made objects from our natural environment, we help generate an environment that fosters well-being and social harmony. Well, this all sounds great. Why isn't it already being used everywhere? There are a few challenges this bio battery still faces. The enzymes used for the generation of electricity currently have very short lifespans to be viable. Just like the enzymes in your body, the enzymes in the EFC are sensitive to the changes, changes in the environment and very quickly lose efficiency when removed from optimal conditions. It's also quite difficult for the technology to scale up to levels that would be useful, that would be useful commercially. Whilst we may see small EFC batteries that could power small torches or that calculator we were talking about, it may be a bit of time before we see EFCs powering large electronic devices. Naturally, any technology faces these types of challenges in their early stages. Also, the scientific costs are, as always, prohibitive. The technology is still in development, and I'm sure all the research scientists in the room or here today can confirm that they could always do with some more cash for their research. If this technology were to be successful, this could be easily used to power the countless devices that require batteries in Kiwi households. They could be used to replace batteries for electronics used in the commercial setting as well. These include devices used in the agricultural, medical and educational sectors. The bio battery replaces all of the millions of unrecyclable and harmful batteries that are thrown away each year.
The bio battery could also be used on a larger scale. As more and more New Zealanders move to electric vehicles, use of the bio battery becomes increasingly attractive. We could literally one day have cars that run off sugar. That means that the toxic heavy metals like nickel and mercury are no longer being produced and dumped into our beautiful environment in New Zealand, and instead our waste is water and other biological compounds. So, what does this may mean for us? The bio battery is an extremely interesting emerging technology that is exactly the type of technology clean and green New Zealand would want to employ. As New Zealand continues to move away from fossil fuels and unsustainable sources of energy, the bio battery might just be the next big thing that revolutionizes how we think about and interact with electricity in Aotearoa.